April Madness. Yes, it's April 3rd, so I'm really rooting for them San Diego State Aztecs, even though I really don't like that university anymore. I used to. I spent a lot of time there because, you know, I'm the marine biologist, so I've got a casualty of this incredible snow event. And I want to talk about this as far as college basketball, overpaid coaches. It's disgusting what these coaches make, including this one. You know, Randy Ray finally got run out of town, but his lifelong assistant took over and it's the same old, same old. So it's for you, we were safe fans. You know, it's 10 years ago since they filled that palace. Remember that CIT tournament? Joe Ballenboy, what an exciting run that was. And we were got the home game all the way to the championship game. That's been 10 years ago. I sat with Eddie Tillman, by the way, and I, I was really sick with cancer then. And anyway, they got beat on a buzzer beater by a great East Carolina Pirates team. So exciting. So so why did Weber stop? What's the matter? Don't they get invited to the CIT no more? Doesn't anyone invite them to the CIT tournament? Now get this. Randy Ray was all about the money. He didn't want to win. Late he's ready for vacation. He didn't want to work no more. That's why they always lost. With He didn't have players? Oh, you mean Damian Lillard? Had by 22 points in the second half. How do you lose with him? Best free throw shooter in the country? It's impossible. Oh, they did it. Joe Ballenboy, Jeremy Sieglin, Jerry Cardi, Scotty Bamford. I mean, the players they had on this board, he couldn't win. He didn't want to win. So last year, he knew he was headed out. He turned down a bit from the CIT. Well, guess what? This is coming right. I, I had to fight it out. You know me. I know all the good shit. They turned it down again this year. Why? The most underutilized building in the world right there. That palace is grand. Remember when we used to have concerts? Let's bungle. In the jungle, locomotive breath. He opened it. I mean, I saw Stevie Nicks freaking here. Well, behind it, she, Fleetwood Mac. I mean, you think about what was here. Alabama. I mean, that's party time, boys. Men at work. I mean, we don't, most underutilized building in the world now. What a storm, huh? Incredible. So, that shot was like a Ted Williams swing. You know, the butler did it. I'm rooting for him, but they're, that's one hot UConn team. Merry Christmas! Yeah. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> so, anyway, this what is good for well, it's a great place to walk your dogs. And so, what everybody here at St. Ogden is born and raised here, you know, what everybody uses this for, this is where you teach your kids to drive. It's a great place on the weekends to bring your little ones up to let them ride their scooters, their bikes, whatever. It's really, there's, you know, stay out there, just out here, there's nobody here. It's the most underutilized building on earth. It's disturbing. It's disgusting, actually. Oh, why don't we have, and I'll tell you what, because this university is degenerate. You think about it. They actually went in the black in that CIT tournament. Sold out, almost. Last place it was sold out. It's a great arena and making money. So why would we want that? It's like the school business I used to teach at at Weber State. Number one. And that's not opinion. That's via the testing. Number one school business in the United States. Look it up. Look it up. The FBI investigation on Chinese influence. Weber State, you know, and dead last. Because they're degenerates. They're sick here. This university is corrupt. I'm here to tell you. I was so pissed when I found this out. So same old, same old. I don't think same old, same old. They lost to Montana State in a game they should have won. You know, Dylan Jones should have been put on the bench. He's got a little bit of rest. He was one for 25 at one point. I'm saying they had him wore out and beat down and tired. So they turned down the tournament again. Why? Because lazy ass coaches. That's why these coaches are so grotesquely overpaid all over the country. Who's the highest paid state employees in all 50 states? Well, Winningham is here. Six million. Oh, what? What? The taxpayer pays these? The taxpayer. They work for the state of Utah. These are state universities. No, Jay Hill will have to be why That's private. He makes a million a year down there now, defensive coach. These coaches are so grotesquely overpaid, it's sickening. 
The NCAA just steals all the money out. And the taxpayers pay these guys. I mean, it's the best part-time job on earth, bar none. I mean, bar none. You know, Clocky does a play-by-play, but he does bees games all summer. You know, he's a hard worker, but these coaches are lazy. That's why I want you. And th- congratulations to Florida Atlantic. That tiny little school, they're not tiny. 30, 000, Weber State's not tiny. There's 30,000 students up here. But they got a greenwashing bus that's going to come in when we already had shuttles that hauled you all over here. And by the way, the green bus they've been working on since 1999. Get this. Guess where our electricity comes from in Utah? What? Well, we're going to say we're the green washing machine. Oh, fossil fuels? Come, yeah, all our electricity. The number one producer of electricity in this country, bar none. Nothing's even close is natural gas. And uh, second now is Wind and Soar, who just passed them scumbag nuclear, the house of the nuclear cartel bill. <laughs> I wanted to get this up because I'm not letting him get away. It pisses me off, actually. Why? Can you believe this weather flip? Can you believe this weather flip? We go from snow famine post Fukushima to snow feast. It's insanity. Wait for the, you know, I'm telling you. Floods are imminent. They're going to be massive. They'll be gigantic. Lower Weber, maybe probably not so much. It'll be here on the small creeks, whatever it'll be, mudslides. You know, because there's nothing come down these creeks for 10 years. They're all full of everything that's in them, you know, 10 years of buildup because there's been no runoff. Okay. There's been no snow. No, they're going to come down. Go Aztecs. Go San Diego State. It's been a long dry spell. All those great teams out early. Who's the greatest player in San Diego State history? Tony Gwynn. Basketball. Yeah, until maybe now, until the butler did it, it might be him. God, how high was he elevated on this shot? He's this high off the ground. He's straight as an arrow. That's like, that's beyond textbook. It's like a Ted Williams swing, as I used to tell Rashid Shahid here. He's from San Diego. You ever seen Rashid Shahid run? Oh, he didn't get drafted. What? I says, you run like Ted Williams swings a bat. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you look up. He's from San Diego, born and raised. You know, Ted Williams. That shot, just so beautiful. It's like the most beautiful, perfect shot I ever saw. He's elevated this high off the ground. He's straight as an arrow. <laughs> as Bill Robert used to say, big time. That's as big time as it gets. Glass text now. I don't know. This UConn team's on fire. They're hotter than hot right now. But I think a lot of confidence. But it's San Diego. Come on. You remember? They were all gung ho, wound up partying in 84. I was there. You know? The Tigers swept them. They're all geeked up. Remember the epic in Miami? Greatest football game in history. To this day. To this day. What happened? Oh, they had to go to Cincinnati in 70 degree windshield work. That, of course, that Cincinnati Beagle team in those days was all that and then some. They were good. But they had to run into Super Joe Montana. But it still says the GOAT. If Joe Montana played in the same rules that Tom Brady played, he'd play till he was 60. He'd have won 20 or 30. Same with Terry Bradshaw. You know, going on. So somebody says the greatest play in history was Butler jumping that route. Yeah, that was incredible because I don't like him. I don't like that Seahawk freaking predictable Pete. He's like Jerry Sloan predict predict he Butler. That other Butler said that he knew what the coaches had him ready. He had watched so much game him. He knew on that exact down in short yardage they ran that exact play. He knew what play was coming. He jumped the route. It's like man, you right here. They knew what they were gonna do every time they did it. Predictable coaches loses. So I like this San Diego coach a lot, man. He says, I was out of plays. I mean, I was out of play. They called them out because I was out of plays. And, well, you know, we needed to go downhill. And they ran downhill, and that shot, big time. Perfect. Can he do it again? It'll be exciting. I'm really thrilled for college basketball. It was an exciting year. A team like Florida Atlantic, congratulations. Make the final four very exciting. So I want you fans to realize here at Weaver State 10 years ago, 
That place was sold out. The new coach, you know, Eric, is he the same old, same old? Looks like that to me. You know, I, I, I wanted Jimmy DeGraff to be the coach, but, you know, we had a good year, but why would you not accept a CIT tournament bid? You know, because these coaches are grotesquely overpaid and they're lazy. They're ready for vacation. You know, I actually find it pathetic. Best part-time job in the world, NCAA basketball coach, or football coach for that matter. Overpaid? Grotesquely. By you, the taxpayers. Stay in tune.